Rukum district in the midwest of the country is typical of much of Nepal. Like many areas, the country's topography and lack of development means no roads and access only by air. Passengers alighting here step straight into the heart of the conflict. Musikot is the capital city of Rukum and serves as a perfect illustration of the military stalemate that this conflict has become. District capitals like this have become garrison towns, guarded by hundreds of policemen and soldiers and heavily defended. And with such a concentration of force ranged against them, towns like Musikot remain beyond the military reach of the Maoists. The last time they attacked a garrison town in Rukum, the aftermath was heavy defeat and loss of life. In these heavily fortified hilltop bases, the government army is almost invincible. But the rest of the district is no man's land and under the effective control of the Maoists and apart from the occasional patrol, a no-go zone for the RNA. But whatever popular support the rebels once enjoyed here in the birthplace of their revolution has now been largely lost to violent and coercive tactics. Bal Bahadur Mala is Rukum's chief district officer and the most senior government representative in a district torn apart by the conflict. The situation is grave here regarding most activities. Uh, in general, all parts of the district is severely affected by Maoist activities here. Maoists are terrorists, in my opinion, because they have in initiated from the very beginning anti-social activities. That's why they are terrorists. Man Kumari Bista agrees. She took shelter here among the heavy police and army presence after Maoists drove her and her son out of their village. Right across the country, hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced by war and economic necessity. Having lost what little they own, these people survive through the mutual support of their fellow displaced. Branded a class enemy by the Maoists, Man Kumari Bista at least managed to escape with her life. Her husband was not so lucky. For many of the inhabitants of Musikot, these pressures can become too much to bear. The body of this man is being stretched to the morgue after he killed himself. Jivan Kadka is a human rights worker who, despite the dangers, records abuses as and when they happen. मानवाधिकार उल्लंघन का घटना रू व्यापक छान वाली पड़ी है सुधार केयर बस सुधार बाय तब नहीं घटना छान और विद्रोही पक्ष वाटा और पारण करने अनि लाम समय से अभियान बने रहा लाम समय जबरदस्त मैन चला रखने अनि राजनीतिक आस्था का आधार में अथवा आपने पास युद्ध लक्ष्य मौत नगरी के आरोप में पड़ी मैन चले दुखा जी यातना दिन ने जेल में रखने लगाए थे कुरार गरीब का सन मलाई के लाये उड़ा मलाई के लाये से बंद देखें बिगत कई बार से ये था व्यक्ति लाई हत्या कर व्यक्ति हत्या करने पर व्यक्ति के कई रूप में कमी आए करने में सुधार बने कहूँ और त्यों बंदा बाहर जाएं मंच सर्वसाधारण जनता वाले जो दोनों रात पक्ष 
One such civilian is Najit Baznet, a friend of Jivan's, a teacher and yet another victim of the conflict. Teachers like Baznet are often the only government employees in remote rural areas and as such are viewed with a great deal of suspicion by the Maoists. Baznet says the Maoists targeted him because his brother was the village chairman and a government supporter and the scars of his ordeal are never far from his mind. These school children are in danger too. Maoists frequently abduct pupils and force them to attend re-education meetings.